Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Now, following on from my previous video, I'm going to begin the first battle in the campaign which is going to be fought by my squad of Russian conscripts. So just to set the scene for those of you who might not have seen the previous video, um, from the Soviet perspective it is the summer of 1942 and the short-lived optimism of the offensives of the winter of 1941 into 42 have completely evaporated. The Germans are once again advancing seemingly on all fronts and if anything making even more of a mess than they did the previous year. And so the situation that my squad is in, in terms of the larger picture, they are one of a number of small units that have been detailed to try and block German advances while the uh, rest of our shattered formations fall back in headlong retreat. Not that the Commissar would allow me to put it in those terms, but essentially that's what's happening. It's the continuation of a really big German drive that will, by the end of August 1942, saw them within sight of the Volga. But of course, at this stage, my, my poor 15 men have no conception that that's what's going to happen. They've just been told to block a certain avenue of approach and hold it for as long as they can. So I've got a fairly standard um, squad of uh, 15 men. There's a slightly higher proportion of machine pistols than you'd normally expect to find. But given that we've been assigned as a blocking force, someone's managed to find some additional firepower for us. The only concern I have, given my play style, is that I really prefer to try and keep the Germans at arm's length if I can, especially when I've got a bunch of unsteady conscripts. And while the, the firepower of the PPSH is very, uh, it, you know, it's very impressive, it does mean our long range punch is slightly reduced. I mean, we do have the DP-28 light machine gun, so that's not too horrible. But what of the opposition? Because, of course, the Germans have turned up with the much more compact squad However, they are elite troops, so they benefit from the rules for... I mean, the rulebook calls it SS, but I think I said in the previous video we're really considering them Panzer Grenadiers or equivalent for this one. Now, those of you who are familiar with the elite troops on the attack scenario in Classic Up Front might wonder um, why I've made certain changes to the German squad. I'm not quite sure how clearly you can see, but... Unfortunately, the makeup of that scenario had four of the German soldiers equipped with the STG-44 assault rifle, which, uh, of course, they couldn't possibly have had in the summer of 1942. And from the Russian perspective, I've absolutely no intention of allowing them such weapons. So what I've done is I've made some substitutions which I think are fair in terms of maintaining the squad's firepower. So... Because this small squad on the German side is effectively a, a, a spear point assault unit, they're just being sent to you know, clear the Russian blockage in front of them. I've taken a slight liberty with the standard makeup of the German squad, so most of the replacements I've put in are the higher morale riflemen, but I have allowed the German squad an additional light machine gun. Now, that is a decision I'll probably come to regret, but I think it's a fair one given the circumstances. So, this is the very first battle of the... Um, it's going to be a short two battle campaign, but with the first battle having a part one and a part two, because that's how elite troops on the attack is structured. Now, in terms of the gameplay, those of you who've been following the upfront videos on my channel probably won't see anything too out of the ordinary. But the difference with this series is that as I go, I have my Russian squad campaign sheet right next to me. And as my troops progress through death and or glory, depending, I am going to be constantly updating their sheet because, of course, the... Um, Elan points. There's a there's a whole column for Elan um, that changes during the course of gameplay as you're met and perform certain actions. Now you can earn Elan points at the end if you win the scenario. You earn Elan points if you're wounded and survive the scenario. You earn quite a few Elan points if you use a hero card or if your character, your soldier 
manages to infiltrate the enemy position and then attack them with the doubled firepower. There's quite a few rewards for doing brave things like that. So let's see how we get on. So we are the front rank uh, of the Soviets trying to hold this, um, hold this position. We know that there's a position behind us, which the Germans are going to have to assault as well, but that's not much comfort really, given that we're the guys in front. The way I'm structuring this scenario is if the Germans break my first squad, if it's not too badly broken, the remnants are just going to have to be swept together to defend line number two. Uh, so here's hoping we're in for a lucky break. So first things first, the Germans have the initiative and looking at their hand, they start off with a gully. Now, they have to be very careful because they have the usual number of soldiers for a squad, but it does mean that although these guys are high morale, highly capable soldiers, if they suffer losses, their squad is likely to break much sooner than mine. So, in the interest of keeping their men safe, they're going to voluntarily deprive their scouting element of the ability to shoot by starting them with in gully terrain. The rest of them at this instance with their high morale values I think are fairly safe. Um, my poor Ruskies have no terrain whatsoever <laughs> except a lonely cower card over there. So um, we have been badly deployed. There's a major surprise given what much of the rest of the Red Army was doing in the summer of 1942. Um, we've just been led out to this open space and told to hold it. Great. <laughs> So let's see how things go. The Germans replace their card for the one they've just played. Now, rather annoyingly for them, they don't have any movement cards, which is a bit of a pain. Um, they have those firing cards, but they're very high value for this stage in the game. So it's tempting to, um, it's tempting to get rid of them. Now, with the elite German rules, normally Germans can only discard one card but if they take one or fewer actions, elite troops can discard two. So with, with slight reluctance, they're going to discard those two. At least they have the consolation of knowing that I don't get them. And they have drawn a brush card and a rally card. Mm, okay, could be better, could be worse. Well, what am I going to do? I'm tempted to use the sniper on them, but really the victory conditions stipulate that the Germans can win if they get at least four personalities within relative range four. Um, and that's uninfiltrated uh, personalities into terrain that will give them cover. So I don't really want to let them get that close. So I'm tempted to nudge my boys forward a bit. So I will use that movement card. It's a shame because it's a flank card, but I think at this range, there's hardly any point trying to flank them. Um, even if I tried it with that group, trying to achieve temporary flanking fire, my, uh, my DP-28 wouldn't generate that much firepower. Maybe it would be, I don't know. See, in theory, I have no idea what's in the Germans' hands. I wonder, is it worth it? Do you know what? I, I will attempt to clumsily flank them. So, Group C begins moving with the attention, intention of attempting to flank Group B, even though we're at the longest possible range. My other groups can't really do anything. So, I'm afraid that's going to have to be it. Although I'm tempted, in the interests of wasting German time, I'm going to have these two groups try and entrench. So, Group A does not. Group B does not either. They needed to draw random numbers of black or red zeros. And, no, they're just busy faffing. So I'll draw my replacement card. Hmm, that could come in useful. Back to the Germans, who are not overly happy with their slow start. Um, they'll discard that rally one card because the rally all is quite useful. And they're going to take a 
bit of a risk getting rid of one of the concealed cards. Because they're still unable to do anything without any movement cards. Very annoying for them. They're getting terrain. <laughs> See, I want those cards, but I can't have them. Back to the Russians. The Germans are being surprisingly still. Maybe they're waiting for us to make a mistake. Um... Don't like this group manoeuvring vulnerably out there for too long. So despite the disadvantages, I'm going to slap that cower card down. So they've moved into their assigned position. And the beauty of it is we have assumed our flanking position of German group B. Now that's rather nice. Next turn we'll be able to start shooting at them. Uh, there's nothing else I can do, so I'm going to try entrenching with the first two groups again. Group A does not do it. Group B does not do it either. Okay. Looks like my troops are being just as slow as their opposite numbers. And we get a rally card to top our hand up. Hmm, okay. Uh, meanwhile, the very frustrated Germans, who are now painfully aware that one of their groups has been flanked, uh, very embarrassing when you're elite troops, they have decided that they can live without the brush cards, so those are going to go in the discard pile. And what are they going to get? Oh, all right, opportunities for softening us up if it comes to it. Uh, the Russians, well, while I have that flanking position, I will be taking advantage of that. But just to build up the suspense, I'm going to watch these two try and entrench themselves again. Nope. And no. It's funny, the Russians are normally rather good at this sort of thing. Never mind. First blood to us. The... Um, Thanks to the flanking, although we're at maximum range, my DP-28 generates enough firepower to use that card. And we will, of course, be targeting Group B. Germans, of course, will play that concealment card to try and stop me. So my firepower is two. And let's work across the front row, moving backwards. So Private Bernhoff, four. Nope, we don't bother him. Private Wolf, no, he's not fussed in the slightest. Private Grease, no. Sergeant Dietinger, no. And lastly, Corporal Hessel, no. So we give them a barrage of fire, but being the uh, steady, steady cold professionals that they are, they don't seem overly bothered by it. That was a slightly disappointing turn for us. Lots of rally cards, though, if anyone wants those. So somewhat annoyed at our temerity, the Germans look at their options. They still can't move, which is extremely aggravating for them, but they can cause us trouble. So wanting to start picking some of us off, perhaps, you know, starting with our weakest group would be a good idea. The, um, the LMG in Group B is going to start opening fire at my Group A. Um, I have nothing to counter and they have no cover, so this is going to be a bit of a rough one for the poor devils. Um, so base firepower is one. I'm going to work across that way. So Private Nosenko. Oh, OK, that was lucky. Um, Private Kvaznikov. Again, he's all right. Private Sokolov. Oh dear. He is pinned. And Private Zayakov um, is also pinned. Okay, that was a good opener for the Germans. My uh, my recon group is, uh, or at least my left flank is, uh, half of them are busy hugging the ground. What is annoying, the Germans still have, um, they've only taken the one action, so they have up to two discards. They're going to keep the cards they've got, but they will discard that sniper on me, because he's a nasty one. And they're going to target my command group, because that's the one Sergeant Rostov is in. 
So drawing a random position check. Uh, no, their sniper is settling on Private Nezevich instead. Okay, fine by me. So he draws for his shot. And it's a miss. Okay, we may, if we're lucky, have a chance at taking out that German sniper on our turn. Let's see what happens. Meanwhile, hmm, lucky I can't see this. This is really not what I wanted them to have at all. Right. Thank God for rally cards. As I have such an embarrassment of riches, those two are going to find themselves rallied. For the motherland boys, I am going to attempt to take out that sniper with the middle group. And we don't succeed because we have to do better on a uh, on a but we had the right number if that had been a two or greater we'd have got him but no no matter we lost him and also that goes out of play because in this scenario the first four buildings cards discarded unwanted or drawn as random number or random position checks get chucked out so there's a useful bit of cover that neither side's going to benefit from um, lastly, that group there, I have no fire cards, so I might just tell them to entrench for want of anything better to do, and they don't really do it. Oh dear. Never mind. Really ought to try using my own sniper, but... Ooh, movement card. Right. Got options of our own now. The Germans are feeling rather confident because our fire so far has been largely ineffective. So they're going to take a chance despite the fact that they've been flanked. And they're going to try and advance their scouting element very carefully. So they are going to push forward Privates Schultz and Wallach while they still benefit from the gully. We can't shoot them at all, so... They're fine to do that. In the meantime, they don't really have enough firepower to be able to play that card, so they're going to have to sit on it for the moment, much to their annoyance. But they'll hold off discarding because they want to preserve their options. Probably a wise decision. Now over to me. I don't like what's happening on my left flank. And I think whatever those two are up to, I'm going to forestall them. So I'm going to order an advance and I hope that I'm not needlessly sacrificing my left wing. But, but actually it might be for the best because this is a bit cold-bloodedly blooded, cold -bloodedly Soviet, but... If I offer an easy target up to the Germans, it might distract them from my more valuable groups. Although what I can do with the others is a bit of a mystery to me at the moment. So um, I think order entrenchments. Let's start with you fellows. No. Right flank? No. Oh well, here's hoping I haven't left my left flank flapping in the breeze, because I have really. What have I got? Ooh, more movement. Okay. Might actually start getting other groups um, churning forward. Uh, the Germans, for their part, they've decided that the best thing to do will be to give those two an advantageous position on a hill. So they've left the gully, but they've seized some rather good terrain there. In the meantime, they're going to advance the weaker of their two LMG groups because they, they could do with getting closer. So they're going to take a chance and order them forward as well. Hopefully, they, from the German perspective, they won't be exposed for too long before they can take cover behind that wall. Um, and also, because my left has advanced, they now develop six firepower oh almost 
It was in retrospect a bit of a mistake having one of the riflemen act as a crew for the LMG, but, you know, mistakes happen, and even the elites get it wrong sometimes. It's not like they're paying for it. Their uh, card drawers are being rather kind to them. What am I going to do? I think... I think I'm going to have to stop the rot a bit. But it's going to involve doing a really risky thing that I may not necessarily want to do. Um, they're already advancing. Uh, I don't want my line to come apart. Um, what are the odds I'm going to get terrain? Because I think speed is of the essence. Really want to play that sniper card, but I don't know how much good it will do, really. The German one hasn't uh, done them much good. I do have rally cards, so it may be worth the risk. I'm going to chance it. It does mean we lose the advantage of our flanking fire, but I have an enormous fire group here that I really could do with getting into position. So I am going to voluntarily give up on that flanking position and I'm going to move them forward. The other thing I'm thinking is that if that group doesn't get into cover quickly enough, I can bring my preponderance of numbers to bear and try and get them in close combat because I doubt even elites would stand very long against those odds. Besides, it's the Soviet preference is for giving them the cold steel in an assault. Uh, so I will, I will commit to that and hope that I've made the right decision. My middle group, in the meantime, will successfully entrench. Hurrah! Finally! Okay, so naturally the command element with the sergeant is going to stay, stay back. <laughs> with his uh, with his command group, um, order all the lackeys forward. Ah, oh, we do have a firing card. We might be able to give our boys some cover. Let's see what's happening on the German side now. There's still not quite enough firepower being developed for the Germans to use that card, so like me, they are going to take chances because they do have concealed cards, they do have a rally all card, and that is their strongest morale group. So these boys are going to join in and pitch forward because they have a fairly devastating fire card in their hands that they would like to use. Um, also, they would like this business finished rather quickly, because although this is a four-deck game, it's amazing how quickly that time can run down. Uh, in the meantime, the weaker fire group with the lower morale values has reached their wall and settled in quite nicely. Thank you very much. And because these cards are so useful, the Germans will hang on to every single one of them. Except for that, which is a scenario-defined coward card. Oh well, could be worse. And a half-decent shooting card. Right. Over to me. Now this lack of terrain is really beginning to sting me now. I'm going to have to do something... Given how weak, that, oh dear, this is all terrible. Um, yes, I can't, uh, I can't actually shoot because they're moving and they don't generate enough firepower at this range. This is awful. All right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just ditch the sniper card and I'm going to target that German group there. So our sniper is aiming at the third man in the line. Uh, oh no, wait, no, the second man in the line, which working from my front will be Private Wolf. Let's see what he does. Oh, he's pinned him. Nice work. I mean, temporarily uh, got him, so he uh, 
It also slows the Germans down a bit because by pinning Wolf, he loses his crew status because he's too busy keeping his head down. Uh, that is very good news for me. It means that his LMG is going to be firing at slightly reduced effectiveness until Wolf sorts himself out and recrews it. And I do draw a rather useful card at the end of all that. So over to the Germans. Now, those two up on their hill can start causing me mischief because the relative range is now two and they can use that lovely firing card. So they're going to pour it on to their opposite numbers there. So firing strength of two plus one because they're on a hill for three plus another one because we're moving in the open. Oh no, that's ah, four. And all I can do is reduce it to three with that concealment card. So let's work across my poor fellows and see what happens to them. So Private Nosenko is pinned. Private Vaznikov is pinned as well. Private Sokolov is pinned and not wounded. Thank goodness. That goes out of play. Well, that was close. And lastly, Private Zayakov is pinned, but thankfully not wounded. OK. That is not brilliant, but it could have been a lot worse. Meanwhile, the middle group of Germans the middle group of Germans, I think, they have options. They can attempt to get rid of the sniper. They could rally Wolf. Or they could play that card as a um, as um, cower card terrain, open ground. It's better off than the exposed position they're in now. Rallying Wolf might be a bit of a waste with a Rally All card. Taking cover is tempting as well, but it does mean they'll lose the opportunity to deprive me of my Sniper. I'm going to play them aggressive and assume they're going to try and get rid of the Sniper. Ah, oh, and they do not. Like my attempts to get rid of theirs, it was dead close, but they didn't quite manage to pin my fellow down and end him. So my sniper, like theirs, is still very much active. And finally, at relative range two, ah, unluckily for me, that group gets to play their deliciously powerful fire card against my large group, which is advancing here. So thankfully they're not on a hill, but it's firepower of three plus one because I'm moving out in the open. And I have no defensive cards, so this is going to sting. Working across, Private Storchillo uh, is fine. Private Soloviv is not so fine. He is pinned. Actually, no, I, I'm so sorry. I've got my maths wrong. So firepower of three up to four. So that was down to three. He is pinned. He's most definitely pinned too. He is pinned. This is not going well. Um, Private Uhailoft is pinned too. No. Junior Sergeant Ali, if you're going to set an example, uh, no, you're not. You're hugging the ground like everyone else is. Great. Um, Private Igorsky. Ooh, Igorsky's being brave. And lastly, Corporal Borisov. Ah, uh, okay. No, the good Corporal has... Uh, despite the fact that Igorsky is still doggedly crewing for him, <laughs> Corporal Borisov has hit the ground. So uh, it's a, a great case of um, spot spot the sensible ones as they advance into a hail of fire and spot the indoctrinated fanatic who's going to keep going no matter what. 
So that was an excellent turn for the Germans. They uh, they very much won the race there. I was taking, I admit, a hugely irresponsible risk, doing my best to pretend that that I didn't know what was happening in the German hand. And unfortunately, it did not pay off. I'm amazed I haven't lost any men yet, but I don't know whether clawing this forward position to try and deny them what they want has proven to be worth it. Maybe it hasn't. Um, luckily for me, I can start the process of clawing it back. So the Rally 1 card is going to go to Group A. We'll get Nosenko back on his feet. I want at least one of them intact in a turn or two. Um, the Rally 5, of course, is going to go on that group. And given that we probably want to prioritise rifles at the moment, I'm going to wake up everybody except Alive. He can, he can uh, stay down and cradle his um, machine pistol for the moment. But we need everyone else back. And lastly, my middle group. Oh, we still don't develop enough firepower to use that rather pathetic little card. So, um, I'm, And we're already entrenched, so I'm just going to draw. Uh, not great, but, you know, it's maybe something I can do with that. So the Germans, uh, uh, having had a really real stonker of a turn, are now starting to run out of puff themselves. Their group on the left is going to do nothing. Their group in the centre is finally going to take advantage of that cower card and hit the dirt. They've got a tiny bit more sense than my lot do. And the group over there... There's not a lot they can do, to be perfectly honest. So they actually, it suits the Germans to only take one action. Because then they can discard. They'll discard one of the concealed cards. Because it, it is worth the risk. They've got two more. And they want to be cycling more cards through their hands. So they get options like nice buildings. Especially when you get close. Ooh, two nice buildings. Just a pity there's no movement cards to... Uh, support that but it might just be a matter of time uh, meanwhile i am rather stuck because on his own nosenko generates insufficient firepower to do anything i don't really want to stop him moving although it's risky over here uh it's not looking much better Between us, we generate five firepower points, which is not too bad. So you've got the, because we're on the move, we have to use the bracketed firepower for the machine gun if we target either of those groups. So that's three. Each rifleman is halved, so that gives me another two for five. Um, but we have to do something about... Um, Oh no, it's not not uh, not brilliant. Whatever we do, we're going to take our chance and fire at the group behind the wall. This is going to be a really pathetic shot because they get minus, they pose minus two on us because of the cover. So our fire's already at minus one, and just to add insult to injury to make sure their group's absolutely safe. They're going to play a concealment card on top of that. So, oh, ouch. Um, yes, minus three. Private Schussel. Nope, he's not bothered in the slightest. Private Schumacher. He isn't either, even though that was a half-decent shot. And Private Streak. Nope, and another building goes out of play. Right, for my last act, 
I think given that I'm leading my men steadily to disaster, we really need to get these guys within range because they're just sitting there behind an entrenchment doing nothing. I am going to order the command group forward as well. So we do lose our entrenchments, much to our regret, but our boys are getting hammered out there and it may do them some good, I hope, to see the Sarge coming out to play as well. This could be a terrible miscalculation on my part, but we'll see. And I'll draw some cards. Ooh, finally, defensible terrain and some nasty stuff. Hey, things are not, things are looking quiet for the Germans again. They're really reluctant to bl burn that rally all card on a single man. It just does not seem worth it. Um, but what they will do is get Private Bernhoff to help Private Greece as his uh, crewman. I won't bother shifting the cards around, but Bernhoff is now doing the loading. Um, they are going to take a chance and discard one of the building's cards because they, again, are anxious to keep cards cycling through their hand. We have now met the full quota for discarded buildings in this scenario, so no more will be placed out of play, uh, unwanted or used as card draws. And let's see what happens. Oh no, didn't want that at all. Nope. Right, my choices are not brilliant. My most fragile group is still exposed in the open, so I'm going to put them safely in a building because they're really not going to last much longer out there. The only problem is what on earth do I do with the rest of them? Everyone is on the move. They can't do much. They don't generate enough firepower. These fellows can take another shot. It's another very pathetic one. I might change tack and try targeting group B. So go to fire, <laughs> generating our firepower of one. They are out in open ground, but just to make absolutely sure we do nothing to them, they play that formidable concealed card. So Private Bernhoff. Nope. Private Wolf? No. Um, Private Grease? No. Sergeant Dietinger? No. And Corporal Hessel? No. So they are just completely unimpressed by all that fire we sent their way. And I'm just going to draw a couple more cards. Really need some rally cards now. Okay, so the Germans don't have too many options at the moment. They still need a movement card to occupy those buildings, but they do have a firing card. And it's very tempting, given that their middle group has regained a fair bit of its firepower with Bernhoff crewing for Greece, and they have a very target-rich environment. Um, they are going to spray, because it's the most logical target, that group with fire. So base fire strength of two. I'm going to desperately knock it down to one, but then the fact that we're moving brings it up to two again. Working across, Private Storchillo. No, he's fine. Private Solovev. No, he's good too. Private Kristov. He too is all right. Cool. Doing okay this time. Private Wihailoft. Um, nope, he's all right. Junior Sergeant Aliev. Nope. Private Igorsky. Ah. Oh dear, not only is Igorsky pinned, but because the total matched his morale value, I checked under the wound column and it's a three. So Igorsky is down and he is wounded. Okay, first blood to the Germans. I'll just find poor Igorsky, his wounded counter. 
And lastly, Corporal Borisov. Ah, OK, the good Corporal is pinned as well. That could have been a lot worse, but it's not brilliant either. Mind you, if Igorsky lives to the end of the scenario, he's just earned himself two alarm points for being wounded. Well done, man. Well done for not keeping your head down. Um, I won't mention the silly fool who ordered you all forward. I mean, yeah, let, let's not mention that. Ooh, that could make next turn painful. The Germans are very happy with that card draw. I, on the other hand, uh, am close to weeping with frustration. I am going to... I can't even discard the stream card because none of the Germans are moving. I mean, I can discard it, but I can't discard it on them, which is deeply frustrating. So I will simply discard the stream card and it will go and I'll draw two cards and just hope no we don't want more movement cards right now <laughs> oh dear normally if I was playing a human opponent I'd be trying very hard to disguise my feelings right now so over to the Germans who are having a truly wonderful time of it now um, they're feeling quite cocky at the moment with us wavering like this. So their scouting element is going to be ordered forward off the hill to give me something else to worry about. And the next question they can deal with is who gets to shoot that lovely, lovely card? Um... Hmm. Actually, luckily for me, at the moment, the answer is nobody, because it's such a high-value card, the Germans need to get themselves closer. So, perhaps with a bit of grumbling, they can't quite set their sights on us yet, but soon will be able to. They do not do too much for this turn. As for me, there's no question, I can't, I can't do anything with this lot. I, I really need rally cards. I have too many pinned men, so I'm going to reluctantly discard those movement cards, praying that the Germans don't draw wire in the next turn, because that would really ruin my day. Aha! I wondered where you fellows had got to. Perfect. Not brilliant, but it's a good start. So the Germans will be a bit cautious. They're conscious that they don't want to put Private Wolf in too much danger. So they're going to order their flanking unit, or sorry, their, their um, left flank, my right flank, to start pressing forward. At the same time, their slightly more fragile unit, the scouting element, is going to ensconce itself very happily in those buildings. Sigh. We're going to have fun trying to dislodge them from there. Um, and they are going to leave it at that because they're very content with everything they've got in their hands. Of course they are. Ah, that might be worth spending on young Private Wolf next turn. Meanwhile, what have I got? Well, the rally cards are most welcome. That one is going to bring back Private Klasnikov. See if we can start forming some sort of coherent defence here. And I am going to rally Borisov and Ali with that one. Um, no offence to Igorsky, but wounded he is slightly less used to me. So those two at least are back on their feet after a fashion. Here's hoping I get some nice cards. Ooh, okay. If we can just keep what passes for our gun line intact and get it close enough to the Germans, we might be able to hurt them. Let's see how that pans out. So over to the Germans, that element's going to sit pretty because they don't have much that they can do. 
they will rally Private Wolf. Slight overkill, but it's nice to have him back. And as is always the case with German squads, even the elite ones, they are very stretched when it comes to um, developing firepower, simply because they don't have that many men. Uh, so every person wielding a rifle properly is most welcome. Um, that group is still advancing, so their shooting is a bit messed up. Um, yes, they they don't develop enough firepower, and they really want to wait until they've got um, some decent terrain to put them in. But what they will do, just to make me a deeply unhappy bunny, is they are they're going to keep that group going or allow them to proceed. But they will mess up my main group by playing a marsh on them. Now that is horrible terrain, because not only is it as bad as being exposed, it also reduces my fire out of it, and it's a devil to get out of. So I am going to reject it, unsurprisingly. We're going to go around. But that, unfortunately knocks me back to relative range zero because I'm having to retrace my steps and go around the natural uh, the natural obstacle. Curses. Thought uh, I realised we're quite a way away from those, but I thought the Pripyat marshes were supposed to be on our side. And after a reasonably happy turn, the Germans will draw... Oh, come on, really? Do they need that? Oh... It's lucky I'm pretending I don't know what's in their hand. I'd be really afraid otherwise. <laughs> um, okay, but at least I have some choices now. Um, it's definitely time to stop the rot. I don't care anymore that we can't shoot. I've I've tempted fate more than enough with my large right right flank group, so they're going to fling themselves gratefully into a gully. Um, I will worry about whether they can shoot at the Germans later. Besides, the relative range is already three to some of their groups, so it won't take much to uh, bring us in range, but I do just need to give them a chance to catch their breath and recover. Um, and, and also to try taking a decent shot, really, because I really want to play that card on one of the German groups, but we've got to sort ourselves out before we do it, so... I'll just accept that it's going to be a quiet turn for now. Another rally card is always helpful. So as for the Germans... They're not going to do anything. They, on the other hand... They've lost their juicy target over there. But there is this group over here. And they develop a total firepower of seven. Hmm. No, still not quite close enough. No, the Germans actually will not do anything this turn, but they're going to take a chance. They may regret this, but they want to keep some cards moving. They're going to reluctantly discard that firing card and see what they get. Uh, no, that, that may not be all that much use to them. I, meanwhile, am going to rally Private Igorsky because I want every shooter I can get in the line. And even if he doesn't do any firing, he can serve a purpose by helping Corporal Borisov. So a quiet turn for me too. Ooh, and that is rather what I wanted. So the Germans are still not getting a brilliant deal out of all this. Um, yeah, they are, they're going to take a chance on this and get rid of that rally card. And they draw 
A woods. Okay, well, that will be useful for that group who are thanking their lucky stars they haven't come under any fire yet. But that can change. So now that... Um... No, I'm not going to take any chances on firepower. Um, do you know what? I've just forgotten. I'm a fool. Of course I can't use those firing cards because everyone's hiding in a gully. All of a sudden, that's no good, is it? Right. Igorsky, I want you to resume your job of helping Corporal Borisov, and then you fellows are going to get moving, preferably somewhere where you can actually shoot at it, at somebody. Uh, back to the Germans. All that happens is that their group over there finishes their dash across open ground and piles gratefully into the woods. They really don't want to get rid of any of these cards because they're all pretty useful, so they'll just draw. That's slightly less useful at the moment. Oh, what about me? I am... Um, I still have pinned men in there, so they're not doing anything. Um, you fellows are still trying to find your way around the marsh. Um, and now I'm stuck with a really awkward choice. Because that is a, a flank card. A beautiful, beautiful flank card. But I'm conscious that even though I've moved most of my men forward, we're still not far enough forward to... Um, to really come to grips with the Germans. It's occurred to me that I might actually be doing them a bit of a favour by moving up to relative range four. But then equally, if I'm at relative range four to them and I get the um, defensive terrain, then that may well work in my favour. Hmm. All right, I'm going to sacrifice the flank card in the interests of... Or am I? No, 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 no. Let's let's be sensible about this. I will use the flank card because then hopefully when they emerge from that gully they will be flanking that rather vicious German group and these will come into play. So there is hope yet. And oh look. Hopefully they will not know what hit them unless they've got other ideas. Uh, the Germans are a bit stuck because they still have that lovely card combo that they love so much, but they're still not able to use it. It's a bit maddening for them. Um, their main group... No, even if they play the hero card on one of the riflemen, it's not going to get them enough to use that. So they're going to reluctantly discard that bit of cover. And see what options they get. Oh no! <laughs> Meanwhile, my lot, I am most definitely playing this wall upon my manoeuvre group because we have now emerged from the gully and joy of joys are in a position to bring some flanking fire over. So once more, German Group B finds themselves flanked. And I will draw a card. Ooh, that could be handy for my main group. Things are looking up. The only problem is, by emerging, I've now exposed myself. And that group at relative range 3 has enough firepower to use this card. So I'm going to pay for my temerity now. Not unnaturally, seeing this huge Russian horde moving up to enfilade their lead group. They don't like it. Uh, I'm going to finally play a concealment card. So their firepower is four, knocked down to three by that. And knocked down by a further two because we've taken cover behind a wall. So this may not be too bad. Let's work across and see what happens. Private Storchillo 
Oh dear, you're pinned. Hmm, okay, there goes my amazing barrage of fire. Private Solovive. Oh, you're pinned as well. Drat. Come on, boys, this isn't what I planned. Um, Private Kristov. Oh, blimey, you are very nearly killed. Goodness for walls and cover. And Private Wuhailoft? Uh, no, you're actually fine. Junior Sergeant Aliev. Nope, he's fine. Private Igorsky is fine. And Corporal Borisov is also fine. So, okay, I suppose we got off fairly lightly there. Um, but thank goodness we're in a flanking position, because that's a fair bit of firepower I've just been deprived of. That is not good. The Germans are going to hold on to what they've got, because they now have a gap in their... Uh... Oh dear, they're going to punish me again next turn if I don't do something. Okay, this is, this is going to be messy. I have the buildings card, which, just for the sake of keeping them safe again... I'm going to stick on my command group. Now, what firepower do I have available? It's relative range 2 to the group I'm flanking, so 5, 6, oh dear. Oh, doubled to 12, so... Oh, let's do it. Let, let's hit them hard and give them, give them a bit of payback. So our firepower is four against German Group B. They've concealed themselves, so it's down to two. Let's work across. Private Bernhoff is not fussed. Private Wolf is not bothered. Private Grease is not troubled either. Drat. Sergeant Dietinger? Oh dear, no. Oh, thank goodness, uh, I was getting some help with the light machine gun, otherwise it might have jammed. Uh, and lastly, Corporal Hessel. Oh, that was disappointing. So our storm of fire achieved absolutely nothing. Oh well, at least we can try again next turn. But uh, I'm afraid my fond hopes of uh, a bit of a knockout blow are sadly uh, not materialising. Back to the Germans. Well, understandably pleased by what they achieved last time and still desiring to scrape these annoying people off their, um, their Group B, the Germans are going to fire again. I have nothing special to stop them with, so I'm relying purely on the wall that my men are hugging. So firepower of two. S Private Storchillo is all right. Private Solovive is okay. Private Kristov is also all right. Okay. Private